The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Thursday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 8.30 a.m. Thursday morning as we come into the long July 4th holiday. And folks, we got markets rocking and rolling right now as we speak. Check out this S&P. We're going to get... Two big numbers coming up right now. Non-farm payroll just delivered at 8.30 a.m. Weekly jobless claims also delivered 8.30 a.m. Markets were already about 20 to 25 points in terms of the S&P in the positive. And check out that S&P, folks. We're going to come into this long weekend with an accelerated action to the upside right now. Looking for those numbers as they come into the news. Jobs increase by almost 5 million, folks. 4.8 million. There's the headline. We'll bring it over real quick. U.S. jobs increased by 4.8 million in June versus the estimate of about 3 million. So we had ADP yesterday. We get non-farm payrolls today. They were expected to be at about 2.9. They come in at almost 5 million jobs. Unemployment rate, 11.1%. That is a beat as well. Now, interesting, we're going to get the weekly initial jobless claims number as well. Uh, only a certain amount of attention that you can pay to all the data coming out this morning, especially coming into a long weekend. But nonetheless, you got the S&Ps up about 1.2% right now. Jumping over to the NASDAQ. NASDAQ, how about all-time highs? All-time highs, and I was going to say on a continual basis. Every day, NASDAQ, all-time highs. Why not? Amazon? Let's just jump over to Amazon. How about Bezos, richest man in the world, richest uh, ever at $171 billion, I think, was his closeout. As of the close yesterday, well, guess what, folks? That number going up again today. And the weekly jobless claims, so that was the number I was waiting for as well. Two big numbers at 8.30. There's your weekly jobless claims number, 1.427 million. The expectation was 1.38. This one is perplexing, folks. I mean, we're getting a steady flow of 1.4, 1.3, 1.5 million jobs every single week. That's an initial jobless claim. That's somebody still losing their job within the last week. But nonetheless, we saw the non-farm payroll number rising by almost 5 million, getting back some of those jobs. Uh, there's Amazon, though, marching higher this morning, 29.12. And we got to jump to it, folks, of all the stuff going on. Have, have you checked out Tesla this morning? Kaboom, $1,232 for the price of Tesla. Keeping track, that's more than $100 above where it closed at yesterday, which was an all-time high. Uh, just early this week, we were at $950, and it looks like we're going to end the week at around $1,220 for Tesla. Remarkable acceleration. We'll jump over to their numbers in a moment. More delivers than they were looking for. They also got an upgrade for Tesla as things just keep rolling. Jumping over to commodities, crude oil getting a pop on both of those numbers at 8.30. Crude yesterday up to 40.58. Right now you're trading at about $40.33. Gold contract down $2. We were at 1807 early yesterday. You trade lower for most of the day to 1770. Early this morning, we were back at about 1785. Within about the last hour, though, gold trading lower. Look at this volatility we're getting on those jobs numbers, folks. 1777. Silver contract basically flat at 1820. And yeah, let's jump to Apple. We got to jump to Apple. Apple trading higher as well. I don't think Apple made it to all time highs, did it? Yeah, 372, the all-time high on Apple, dating back to the 23rd of June. We're right up near that level at 367 so far this morning. Why not jumping around to some of those other tech stocks? Microsoft shares going to open right now at an all-time high with a bid of 206.40, the all-time high yesterday, 206.35. Let's jump to some of the social stocks. How about this rebound from Facebook, right? Facebook, folks, going to open 240, all-time high, 245. So much for the boycotts of their advertising, Facebook's almost at all-time highs. Keep that in context as you hear about these advertisers pulling out. Uh, it's really not going to matter if they pull out for 30 days and then they come back. And that's what they may do because there's no advertising operation engine, basically like Facebook, when it comes to targeting. Twitter shares, for some context, we're going to open at about 31. Not quite the same story as Facebook, that's for sure. All right, jumping around. Let's see, what else we got going on? Where's my stories? 
Okay. So, in terms of Tesla, we'll start it off. Why not? The man Elon going in, going to have himself quite a July 4th weekend. So, Tesla deliveries, let's go to it. All right, there we go. Tesla sh shares soared, it's a little tongue twister, during pre-market trading following the automaker reporting Thursday, it delivered 90,650 vehicles in the second quarter. The analysts had expected about 72,000 vehicles. Even on the high end, you're talking about 83,000. They come in at almost 91,000. Tesla's up in a big way. So in the first quarter of the 2020, Tesla said it made more vehicles than it sold with 102,000 produced and 88 delivered during the second quarter, Tesla made 87,000 vehicles. They had some shutdowns there, so you're going to see a decrease in supply. Um, and they delivered 95,000, including 77,000 Model 3s. Uh, quite a quarter for Tesla. It just not stop. And anytime, folks, anytime you see a CEO tweeting out congratulatory messages for all of their employees before they tell the world, how they're going to do in terms of raw numbers, those numbers are probably going to come in pretty well. And that was the case here. This was the story uh, last night. Elon congratulating his employees ahead of that delivery report. So you're already trading higher on Tesla. Uh, Tesla got an upgrade as well today. Um, but getting into the action, I mean, you are already higher. And then things just uh, popped even higher, I think, on the deliveries number at about 7 a.m. So you're trading at 11.73. You're up at about 12.16 right now. All right, other stories. Last night, it comes out, McDonald's, they're going to halt the U.S. reopening plans as coronavirus cases spike. Uh, no more indoor dining. They're pausing the U.S. reopening plans for 21 days. Franchisees who have already reopened dining rooms are not facing any rollbacks from local officials, uh, can decide if they want to keep them open. But McDonald's execs emphasize that franchisees who continue to be disciplined about safety measures. Um, the shame about all this, folks, is that if everybody would try and wear a mask, and not even try if you're able to, things could be a lot more open. But the persistence of the difficulty in any type of social distancing while we're, you know, a, or wearing a mask when you can't, as the COVID-19 numbers just rage on. But McDonald's, so out of about 1,000 out of the 14,000 locations have reopened with reduced seating, and that's going to be a problem as McDonald's already coming out and saying, hold on a second, we're going to pause that for about 21 days. You see the news last night, McDonald's spikes below 183, but guess what, folks? Jobs, 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 this market. Stocks only go up, as they say lately, so sarcastically. Guess what, folks? They only go up until they go down. Um, there's an expression in poker, when you go all in, it works every time until the last time, right? Uh, so be aware, stocks only go up until they don't. And we're talking about NASDAQ, you know, the biggest technology companies in the world. I was just looking at DocuSign. How about this run in DocuSign just in general this morning? We're talking about from $60 and change in March, the low really $65. This morning, we're going to open at 183 on DocuSign, maybe 182. Just crazy action. We've all been following Zoom. Zoom to the roof. We're up at about 260, challenging the all-time highs on Zoom as well. Uh, continued action. And how about the VIX? How about a 2692 print on that VIX? The low on June 5th, 2354. Below that, and you'd be talking about February numbers on the VIX as we come into July 4th week. Stay tuned, folks. Should be an interesting Thursday in the markets, digesting those jobs numbers. We'll get into those numbers a little bit more when we get back from the Many break. of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their July 4th Tiger Dollar Sale. For one week only, we've doubled all the bonuses where you can now get up to a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase. Tiger Dollars are good on all TFNN newsletters, webinars, and trading services and never expire. For all the details and to get your Tiger Dollars before this sale ends Monday, July 6th, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. 
The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 866-476. 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Right now, you're looking at S&P up about 40 points, hanging at 3140. NASDAQ futures up about 100 at 10,368. And the Dow up 372. Checking in on Boeing. Boeing's had a volatile week this week as they've been dealing with the recertification of that 737 MAX, putting it on a shorter time frame. We were as high as 195 on Monday when those tests started. Boeing pulled all the way back to below 180 right on the open on Tuesday. A little bit of volatility on the open on Wednesday, but guess what? We're sitting at about 185. We're going to open a bit lower on Boeing. Relatively right near, though, where we opened the week, you did get that pop from about 170 to 180 to 185. Looks like a recalibration at 737 MAX looks to get recertified. Things seem to go well, but we'll wait and see how those tests went with uh, whether it was the Boeing pilots or the FAA as well. All right, jumping around to some of those numbers within the jobs number. Before we get, we got Hong Kong as well trading higher, Asia trading higher. So in terms of the numbers coming out, job gain of 4.8 million in June. Expectation was under 3 million. Unemployment rate of 11.1. They were looking for about 12.4. Okay, and this is what I want to get into. So the numbers capture all the moves by the 50 states. However, because the government survey comes from the middle of the month, it does not account for the suspension or rollbacks in the regions hit by a resurgence in coronavirus cases. Read that line, folks. Drill it into your brain. Because the dynamic of what's going on has dramatically changed over the last 15 days. This is a big number, but COVID spikes, whether it's in Florida, Nevada, California, um, you almost can't keep track right now of the spikes going on uh, across the country. Uh, leisure and hospitality again accounted for the biggest jump as the sector saw 2.1 million gain. That was about 40 percent of the total growth. Another big contributor to the decline in the jobs rate was a plunge in those of temporary layoff. That total fell by 4.8 million in June to 10.6 million after a decrease of 2.7 million. Again, you're dealing with temporary layoffs here. This number is dating back to the middle of June. And I remind you that we're dealing with stories like this, where McDonald's is now pausing the reopening plan for 21 days and saying, if you did reopen, you might be able to keep it open. I mean, you're seeing California yesterday. They just came out. And what's happening? They're talking about uh, bars shut down yet again. So you're going to see some volatility continue in this one, folks, uh, as that marches on. 
All right, so China and Hong Kong, Asia stocks were higher last night, talking about there was the first opportunity for them um, to really factor in the news, whether it was from Fi uh, Pfizer, not weather, from Pfizer and BioNTech, showing the potential for a vaccine. Asia shares trained higher. Hong Kong surges nearly 3%. Now, remarkable action that you have Hong Kong surging that when the political unrest going on over there, folks, with the new law they passed. Uh, I believe there are hundreds of people arrested over in Hong Kong. Over the course of the last 24 hours, many of them using that new law that you could risk life in jail um, if you're basically not say anything against the, the transition to China. So nonetheless, uh, it's all about COVID, vaccine potential, and Hong Kong trades higher. Okay, a couple of equities. So Ford, they're going to partner with Disney to unveil the Bronco SUV. On July 13th, 11 days from right now, they're going to unveil that across the Disney media networks, including ABC, EB, ESPN, excuse me, National Geographic, and Hulu. So Ford working with the um, Creative Works, the company's in-house agency, in creating custom three-minute videos for each network. So you got Ford coming out with the Bronco in about 11 days. Some of my buddies in the going to high school in the late 90s, the Ford Bronco. One of my buddies had a nice Bronco, um, and they're back in town. So Ford up with the market today. Disney's had some real volatility when it comes to uh, COVID opening and, and, and the pullback in terms of it maybe not opening. You see the fall off even from where we were in Disney. We were up June 8th, as high as 127 almost. And you just trade to basically a low of 108. And this morning, though, we're going to open near in 115 on Disney shares uh, as it looks to be good news potentially on their open. Now, housing market. A couple stories jumped out at me. Um, I'm always looking at bunch of different stories, seeing what's on the market, seeing what's happening and what's hitting equities and so forth. And these real estate stories keep going, folks. And um, for the markets out there that were super saturated, um, you know, I mean, Boston, Boston, if you're in the heart of Boston, um, South Boston prices, uh, my original hometown, Borden Southie, uh, have been fanatical prices because of the need to people for people to work in financial or just business hubs. Boston being one of them, San Francisco, New York City, um, Seattle has some areas uh, you know, of high tech area. Remarkable drops going on in these companies, in these areas, excuse me, as people have the ability to work from home wherever they be. We've seen that Slack, Microsoft, especially the tech companies, and the tech companies have built some of the biggest um, real estate bubbles going on in in the country and maybe even the world in terms of needing to be near Silicon Valley, needing needing to be near um, those types of build those types of uh, centers of economics. Average rent for a one bedroom apartment in San Francisco fell almost 12 percent year over year in June, following a nine percent year over year drop in May. You got Twitter, Facebook embracing work work from home, and now so this is San Francisco, and I'm jumping around Bloomberg. Pretty much a similar article talking about Manhattan home sales. Now, that was rents in San Fran. This is home sales in Manhattan. You got a couple things hitting it um, in terms of whether it's the ability to write off state taxes on your federal income. That is hitting some of the bigger properties, of course, in states like New York and Massachusetts. But you got Manhattan home sales fall most on record in lockdown quarter. Purchases of co-ops and condos in the borough tumbled 54% from a year earlier to 1357 Biggest annual decline since the firm started keeping the data in 1990. And there's your drop off, second quarter of 2020, 54%. You got to bring it back to basically 2009 and the woes there. Uh, I would not be buying a condo or a co op in Manhattan right now, folks. I would be getting out of them as fast as I could. And why not come on down to sunny Florida and buy a beautiful spot because everybody's going to be coming down to sunny Florida or wherever you want to be. And you just fire up your Skype. I'm on Skype. Everybody's on Skype. You can do your show. You Zoom, right? You Zoom, you DocuSign, uh, and you get it all done. But remarkable trends, and I don't see those changing anytime soon uh, for those markets specifically. All right, what else we got going on? Stocks making moves. So we talked about McDonald's. They're, they're going to halt further reopenings of the dine-in service. Talked about Tesla. So Webbush was the one that upgraded them to twelve fifty from a thousand. They may they may need to upgrade that uh, price tag by today. Did they tell us that they were going to get to twelve fifty by the open this morning? 
because they almost are, folks. They were at 1,000 where Bush, well, guess what? We were just at 1,000 on Tuesday, and they upgraded to 1,250. We might be at 1,250 by Thursday. That's how fast Tesla is moving. JetBlue reached a deal with its pilot union that will avoid involuntary furloughs until May of next year. According to a memo, the memo did not give any further details. These airline stocks talk about some Max Payne, JBLU, their symbol. Uh, JetBlue up a bit with the market today, no real action on that stock as maybe to be expected. Americans said it was overstaffed by about 8,000 flight attendants may seek to cut the workforce through voluntary leaves and early retirements trying to avoid uh, forced layoffs. American, this is volatility yesterday, right? Now American, the one out there saying that they're gonna try and fill their planes shortly, good luck to that. Boeing we talked about completed a series of recertification tests out there. So NEO, the China-based electric vehicle maker, delivered 3,740 vehicles in June, a monthly record exceeded prior guidance with the second quarter deliveries of 10,331 for the whole quarter. NEO, this one trading higher, maybe a little optimism on the heels of Tesla. Check out that pop from eight up to 923 on NEO. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to see what else we have on tap for Thursday trading. Back in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by Bam! as well as whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us. And Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. Bam! If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Thursday trading coming into that long weekend. Be safe out there. Have a great long weekend. Practice some social distancing. 
Wear a mask, folks. Help us to get over this hump. Dow futures, they're getting over it. Up 409 points. S&P up 36. NASDAQ up 96. Speaking of July 4th, we got a July 4th Tiger Dollar sale going on. Head on over the front page of TFNN. We double the bonuses, 20, 30, or 40% bonus on whatever you spend, whether it's 500, 1,000, or 1,500. You can get up to a 40% bonus, 600 Tiger Dollars additional, a 30% bonus, 300 Tiger Dollars additional, or a 20% bonus, an extra 100 Tiger Dollars on what you spend. Those Tiger Dollars, good for all newsletters, services, webinars, trading workshops, uh, never expire, and good for all that. That stuff. Check that out on the front page of TFNN. That sale running through this weekend through Monday, July 4th. We run that sale about a couple times a year. All right, jumping around to what else we had going on. So the weekly jobless claims number, I mean, like I mentioned when this number came out, folks, we're dealing with basically a stagnant, a stagnant number of 1.4 million that we're going to be losing every single week. Uh, that is not good when you compare that the biggest number we ever had pre-COVID was about a weekly initial jobless claim of 700,000. We're now sputtering out at a 1.4 million number continuing. And you're going to hear a lot about that weekly, uh, excuse me, the non-farm payroll number. Remember that number for the middle of June. This is such a dynamic situation. The one thing I would say, whatever you're thinking, make sure you're always seeing what's going on because things are changing pretty quickly, whether it's earnings, profits, market action. But right now, strength into the weekend it looks be pretty tough to see a sell-off coming into america's birthday july 4th um get out there be safe have some fun uh de-stress take a few days away from this crazy market and come back monday ready for more because the volatility is going to persist even if we get a vix of 26.84 as we look to open Thursday trading. Low volatility with a market that just continues to march on. We now get the Dow. Maybe we'll get a presidential tweet, 26,000 in the Dow. That's a weekly occurrence, why not? 26,020 in the Dow futures, 3144 in the S&Ps, 10,373 all-time highs in the NASDAQ. Stay tuned, folks. Larry Pesavento coming up next with Trade What You See.